What is up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will, and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. I've been super excited to present this episode with you guys today as I have a brand new sample pack out and it's absolutely free. You can grab it from the link in the description below. Today's episode is about the techniques I use to create that sample pack, just in case you guys wanna create one of your own at home. For me personally, I found creating a sample pack absolutely fascinating. You pick up loads of new techniques designing your own sounds and you really start to think about your compositional techniques differently because you have to take into account the audience that's going to use them. We're going to divide this video up into about three parts so use those timestamps as always at your own convenience. Let's jump into it. So one thing that the producer community has in common is that we love drum sounds. And that might be one of the places that you wanna start is to build a drum library. I would suggest something like UVI to get yourself started. I combined UVI with my own drum sounds. It's a really easy workstation to use and opens up inside your DAW of choice. Sorry guys, Will from the future who's currently editing the episode that you're watching and for whatever reason it took me five whole minutes to explain uvi drum designer which isn't a sponsor by the way and what i should have done is just given the overall highlight in how it can benefit you how to use it with some time lapse footage that you're now currently seeing that was so much easier right i apologize again friends so just to recap i'm using uvi drum designer alongside some of my own acoustic drum sounds so i can better shape the transients from them back into ableton to resample with some noise or effects and then I'm going to use a multi-layered sampler to just tweak those sounds and better shape the one shots that you can hear in the pack. I'll hand you guys back over to Will from the past so we can explain those next steps. I'm gonna show you how I did that with another clean drum sample. So here are two samples from the pack that are relatively clean that I might have wanted to combine to make a new sound. Of course, you can go about this by just combining and layering your samples, but it doesn't work too great in terms of trying to get the right velocity. What I mean by that is we can layer them up like this. We've got a clean kick and we've got this sound here and we can kind of try to blend those if we want until we get the sound we want, but there's not too much control there. What I like to do when creating this sample pack was use something like a multi-layered sampler like the CR8. So what we do is pull in our multi-layered sampler and then on one layer, drop our kick drum sample and on a whole new layer, drop our noise sample. With my noise layer soloed is I would just kind of go through and find that interesting part that I liked. I'm looking at this quieter point towards the end. Now I can start to tune that with my sample as well. I want it to be a brighter sound because I want that transient noise to come through. So then I tried to figure out the level of the sample and then how much it's going to decay as well. So I'm going to set a little bit of a fade. After that, I might want to put a little bit of a filter with some drive on the entire thing too. Something that's really nice is that I can apply the modulator to the cutoff, increase that modulator parameter and apply an LFO to that as well. So there's a little bit of a curve to the noise every time the kick performs. So you can really dial in a sound that is unique to you. Once I had a whole bunch of sounds like this, it was time to go over to my arrange page to start putting these into loops and samples that you guys could download. Okay, buckle up. This is my huge project that I went about arranging the sample pack in and shouts out to Docado. He featured on the channel before. He really, really saved the day in helping me understand arranging samples a little bit better in a better workflow. So his advice was to set up a project with these markers at the top of the screen. You can see here 80 BPM, that is C major, 120 BPM, D major, 100 BPM, F sharp minor, so on and so forth. This is so you can create mini tracks inside of a project and you have an idea of the different keys that you're going to create these tracks in and the different tempos. This way you don't have to have any physical notes on the table or keep jumping between projects to remind yourself 
what key the last sample pack was in. One of the main things that you want to bear in mind when you're creating your sample pack is what you have at your disposal that perhaps not many others do. One of the things that I like to use on the guitars was the microcosm pedal. I've used a combination of portal, the microcosm, machine, different hardware. And of course, I'm a drummer by trade as well. So I've recorded a lot of my own grooves. And therefore you have to bear in mind some of the Foley sounds, the sounds that you're gonna go out into the world and record on your phone or a Zoom handy recorder as well. When Storm Eunice unfortunately came through the UK, I was fortunate enough to have my Zoom recorder at the ready. So I've built loads of Storm Eunice rain sounds and wind into this sample pack as well, which makes it truly unique. Find something like that that can excite you when you're creating your sounds. So I've got these different checkpoints set up and you can see that everything is color coded. Let me talk to you about part one to five first. Basically, these are just color coded groups. You can see part one links with one, part two with two. And these color coded groups are just resample tracks and they have the same amount of tracks in them that have instruments underneath. So basically I can reroute these tracks into their resample tracks above and then that way process the audio more, trim them down, or just have them ready for the sample pack as I intended them to sound. It gave me ultimate control over the sample stems and how I wanted to flip them. And it also made it so that I could listen to them back before I put it out to you guys. Underneath, I just created a group with my instruments in there. At first, I would start with a couple of melody instruments that I wanted to use, then my individual one-shot drums or a rhythm that I'd made up from those drums, and then some basses. Let's give you a feel for one. I've got one ready here on group two. guitar in this track was made from my best bud Adira so I want to give a special shout out to him as well he's a phenomenal producer and works on the Fuji Glow EP with me as well so do make sure you check out his music don't worry I know what you're thinking when I create this sample pack I'll probably come up with other ideas for my own music and you're absolutely right as I'm going through I'm thinking that's an idea I'd like to save for myself so I do set it aside and when I do set it aside I bear in mind how I'm going to distribute that music you guessed it Distro Kid. I've spoken about them to no end in all my other episodes, so I'll keep it brief. Personally, I think they're the best and simplest distributor to use online, and they make it really easy to get your music on all the streaming platforms. They even have a handy preference that makes sure that your music isn't copyrighted by other people. There's some sneaky people out there. So if you want to use them, there's a link in the description below, and you get 7% off your first year. Let's crack on. We've got a bit to go through yet. So inside my group, I'm thinking about my audience and I'm bearing in mind loopability. Can this sample be easily looped and can it be turned into a full song? So there's also alternative samples that fall inside this loop. I'll give you an example. So the main melody that you're hooked into right now is this pitch pluck that I've made out of the wavetable. It's got some LFO goodness going on inside the matrix. We're using the chorus ensemble on vibrato. Utility to just bring that gain down a little bit and EQ8 as well as the ultimate group having RC20 there, the low fire device that you can pick up from my Patreon, and then a final limiter. And then it goes on to my master chain as well. This secondary guitar doesn't work too well with that same melody. So this is where those resample tracks from earlier would come in. What I would do is then low pass this first guitar and then come up with this second guitar line. So what you want to do is go about creating all your songs in them. Once you've got all of your songs there, you have to go about thinking, how am I gonna create a demo track for this as well? And how am I gonna gel all those songs together? And that's where the bonus effects and tops and textures will really help you out as well. So when about creating those after, tops are super easy to create. You just take your samples and your Foley sounds and create new rhythms that your audience can use on top of standalone kick and snare one shots. 
Finally, when creating atmospheric sounds, you wanna make sure that there's plenty of automation. The things that your audience might find difficult or just tiresome, it takes a long time for them to create. Make sure that you have one shot samples that your audience can just drag in and it just works with their music. This is a kettle boiling and I've got some of my go-to effects. I've used the vocoder, the EQ8 and some Valhalla vintage verbs. And here's one of Storm Eunice with just the EQ. Works really great as a drop and then a riser into a new section of your song. If you're seriously considering making a sample pack and you've made it to this point in the video, one of your other concerns might be batch processing all these samples and speeding up your workflow because you might have, like I did, 150 to 200 sounds, maybe even more, and you don't wanna name them all individually. For me, I used Isotope RX-8. There are many other free options, but I found Isotope RX-8 the easiest thing to do all inside the box rather than using one app that was free to batch name everything, another app that you could normalize everything in. Isotope RX-8 just had it all for me. You just drag in all of your sounds on the screen. Now I've got all my kicks. I can then go over to the module chain and choose what parameters I want to edit all of these samples at one time. For me, it was just the target volume of minus six dB so I could send them over to BandLab. And then finally, my output location and what that file name was gonna be for all of my drum sounds. I hope that was helpful. Isotope RX-8 really became a lifesaver at the very end. So yeah, just another final point that I thought I'd throw into the video because I understand that can be kind of a stressful part once you've done all of this hard work already. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let's run that outro.